Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rob Gill. And today we're going to talk about how does insurance factor in to financial planning? So when I think about financial planning, you know, the overall process of making sure that you have an investment philosophy first, making sure that there's goals and objectives, making sure that you're on the map, but you know where you are on the map and you know where you want to go, right? That's like the first step. And typically what happens is a lot of people out there, they'll buy a bunch of different products from a bunch of different people based on a, a bunch of different opinions, but they don't necessarily know how that factors into their world, right? So. What we love to share with folks out there is the importance of insurance, not only on your car, right? So you want the full replacement value of your car, not only on your home, you want the full replacement value of your home, God forbid if it burnt down, but umbrella on both home and car because there could be created lawsuits in the unforeseen um, catastrophic accidents. So you have umbrella policies, which kind of think of an umbrella, it's raining out. It gives you protection and coverage, right? But last but not least, the importance of life insurance, not even necessarily when you shuffle off this mortal coil, but also while you're alive. So when we think about the full replacement value, when we think about human life value, right, we wanna take a look at whatever uh, the insured, the person who has the insurance on them, what their income is, right? And there's typically a 20 to a 30 factor based on income, so for example, if you're a married couple and, and you know, the husband is a person that makes 100 grand a year and the wife is a domestic engineer, i.e. a mom that holds it together for the children, for the family, you want to look at getting a policy on the earner of anywhere between two and three million dollars, right? So that's a full replacement value of the income, no different than if there was a car accident or a house. With that being said, the benefits of insurance and the right kind of insurance, because remember, you could purchase a $2 million term policy, put all of your other money into investments that when you retire could be taxed at ordinary income and your insurance runs out. So now you're kind of subjected to a certain amount of income and relying on social security on top of that versus if you purchased whole life as a complement or a shield to everything else that you're putting all your money into. So when you look at whole life and there's beautiful features, it's like a Swiss army knife. We talk about that all the time. Not only do you have a guaranteed rate of return by state law and by contract, it grows tax-free, comes back tax-free up to basis. And then once you break basis, you can then borrow, right? So that's one of the features. Every dollar inside the policy, and you have to read the fine print, you wanna make sure that your attorney's on the same page as your accountant. Once again, integration and coordination is protected from lawsuit it's protected from disability from the standpoint, hey, if the insured gets disabled and they can't work anymore, they don't get disability income. However, the insurance company will pay for the premium. It's called disability waiver of premium. Once again, Swiss Army knife. We also have the ability to utilize the money while it's earning a rate of return inside the policy for alternative investments. And that's for more of the advanced person that's out there. But how does this factor into the overall financial plan? Well. The right kind of whole life gives protection towards the whole financial plan because when you retire, if you have the right insurance and if you've done proper planning along the way, there's a death benefit that never expires. Typically term insurance death benefits expire, typically index universal life death benefits expire based on statistical norms. However, if the whole life death benefit does not retire, does not end, you could spend down all of your other assets while you're alive during the distribution phase of your life and that death benefit will replace to the surviving spouse exactly what was spent down if it's measured the right way. So now that we are able to share with you the ability to not only contribute during your wealth accumulation phase as a complement to whatever else you're doing, you're planning in the overall financial planning realm, but the distribution side, which isn't typically spoken about, where the insurance not only will give you an income stream as a complement to the income coming out of your qualified products, if that's where your money is, it also gives you the ability to monitor and measure what taxes are gonna be at at any given point in time in the future. Because here's a real quick story, if you're 70 years old and you're required to take $10,000 out a year, right? Even though you could take 100, 
but taxes are at 70%, you're gonna to wanna to take out the 10, and then the rest of the income you could take out from your insurance policy. So that Swiss Army knife effect has a futuristic view, and it gives you balance and the ability to maneuver based on what current tax code is in that particular year when you retire. You know, so we're really focusing on how insurance factors into the overall financial planning. And one of the things here at Epic that we do is, we have what we call the Epic Wealth Builder, which is the ability to put all your financial data on one landing page. So not only are we able to help you monitor your checking account, your savings account, um, your, your brokerage account, your qualified plans, your credit card debt, it's all measured, but also all of your different insurances. Once again, circling back, overall financial planning, proper replacement value for the earner, right? At the same time, we want to make sure that if you look at the insurances on your home and your car, what that looks like, what are the um, deductibles, are they too high, are they too low, how does that me measure into your umbrella policy, all of this stuff can be studied on that model. And when you have that kind of clarity and that kind of vision, what you're able to do is really take that next step forward in your decision making and being able to make proper decisions along your financial plan that prepares you for the most uncertain times, i.e. COVID-19 when winter came. The question was, did you have proper planning in place? Did you have proper financial organization? Did it tie into your financial planning? And if it did, then you were able to withstand the storm. And if it didn't, you were stuck and being stuck meant a lot of people moved ahead. So we're pushing out content every single day. We're here to share and contribute and give as much information as we possibly can. If you like what you hear, please hit the subscribe button. If you wanna add comments below and interact with one of the team members and have specific questions, please add a comment.